Welcome to City Church of Dallas. It is so powerful what God is doing here. So just tune in, open up your heart, let the music open up your heart, worship right where you are with us in your hotel room or in your office or in your home and let God touch your life. Let the word go deep inside of your heart. Words are seeds. Let them produce a harvest. Let them be planted in the soil of your heart and let God do a great work in you. I'm so excited that you are here with us for this broadcast. I believe God will change your life. Before we came out here, I heard God say, let the weak say I am strong, that God was going to strengthen us today. Hallelujah. So no matter how weak you feel, I want someone in here to say, I am strong. I am strong. Say it like you mean it. I am strong. Hallelujah. So singers, come on. Let's get ready. Let's worship. Are you ready to praise God? Do you love the Lord today? Has God been good to you? <laughs> John 4, Jesus said, you get to be born again, and when you get born again, if we look for God somewhere out there, but I'm telling you where he is, he's in you. Should have been there when I 
and I don't know how I'm going to get through. I might not have an answer. I might be on hold. I might be on waiting time and I don't know how to get through a situation. Sometimes when I become overwhelmed with all that my plate has on it, I've learned that worship is something I can do that literally brings a transformation to my mind. And hope arises within my heart. Amen.
Oh 
just picture right now the Lord Jesus on the cross? And I want you to picture all of your sin being placed upon him. Because he was innocent. He was without sin. He lived his whole life with no sin. But the Bible says before we ever knew him, while we were still sinners, he died for us. It was my pride. It was my lying. It was my lust. It was my deceit. It was my sin that put him on the cross. And I'll never know, I'll never know, Lord, how much it cost me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's why we worship. That's why we worship. That's why we worship. That's why we worship. Because you want. trumpet is Tim Dorn, pastor. Sheena, I want you to, um, I want you to tell me and I want you to tell us why are you not a worship leader? Why are you, why? What, what is the reason? Why are you a worshiper? Psalm 27, 4 says, One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that one thing will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever, and that I might gaze upon his beauty. The reason that I'm a worshiper is because God has revealed himself to me in the last 21 years of walking with him, because he's revealed his beauty. Because he's revealed his glory. It's all throughout scripture. The Bible describes the beauty of the Lord. And we're not talking about physical appearance. We're talking about the beauty of his character. We're talking about the beauty of what he did on the cross. We're talking about the beauty of how he said no to sin. You know, Jesus was a man. He was born from a womb of a woman, and he could have sinned, but he did not sin. I worship him because he's worthy. I worship him because it was me that he died for. 
And I worship him because he is the lamb that was slain. (laughs) Isaiah 53 describes the beauty of the Lord. And I want you to meditate on that this week. Isaiah 53. He has no form of comeliness. When we see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Despised, we did not esteem him, but he bore our griefs and he carried our sorrows. I worship him because he took my place. I worship him (laughs) because he took my shame. I worship him because he made me beautiful when all I had to give him was ashes of a life that was burned up by sin. He gave me beauty for my ashes. What kind of an exchange was that? (laughs) He was oppressed and he was afflicted, but he did not open his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shearers is silent, so he opens not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. The pleasure of the Lord to put him to death for me. That's why I worship him. That's why he's beautiful. Hallelujah. Where did Pastor Jeff go? (laughs) You know, I'm a preacher. You can't just let me have my (laughs) Here, take that with you wherever you, you got that. Hallelujah. Um, this is going to be a different service. I already sense it. I already feel it. We had a plan. I had a plan, but I'm breaking it already. I've been breaking it since before we started the service. The order of the service is already totally, completely messed up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, Dee Dee, please come and please sing. We'll just see. We'll go by moment by moment. See what God does. Is that all right? Penny's mom is here. I love you. I, I was there in the hospital with you. I'm so, I love you so much. You're a walking, living miracle. You're a testimony of the love and grace and healing power of God. <laughs> now, can I say thanks? For the things God you have done for me You see it's so many things So undeserved But yet you prove Your love for me The voices Of a million angels Could not express my gratitude all that I am all that I am all that I am or ever hope to be Lord I give it all to me. He has, he saved you and me 
Go back there to Gary. I just saw Gary. The Lord just told me that he's going to give us strengthening into his body, into his situation, his finances, his emotions. There's an encouragement coming, Gary. In the name of Jesus, I speak strength into your life. I speak the power of God and the joy of the Lord that is your strength into your life into every day of your life, every hour of every day, in Jesus' name, every minute of every hour, I speak a strength imparted right now. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of God. Children, Miss Hoyt, raise your hand. Follow Hoyt right there. Ch -ch city kids in the city kids room slash choir room slash prayer room slash cafeteria. Love you, sweetheart. Thank you for ministering to these awesome kids. She came up Tuesday night in the um, in that move of God we had Tuesday night, and said, "I just feel like God is speaking to me." That I think it was once a month. Angie, she said once a month she wants to do haircuts for Austin Street. So um, I think maybe here. I'm not sure, but I love that because she's really good. Hallelujah. Who cares if it's a free haircut? If you wind up, you know, looking like alfalfa or buckwheat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm not going to minister on what I was going to minister on. I'm just going to touch for a few minutes on the scripture that's on my heart. So let me talk about that really quick, and then we're going to go do a couple other things in the service before we leave. Um, let's um, go to that scripture. Share, please. Hallelujah. If you're here and you've never been here before, lift up your hand so I can see it. <gasps> Tracy. Mark, Mark, lift up your hand. This is Mark Dorn. This is Pastor Tim Dorn's brother. Um, Mark Dorn and Tim Dorn, I ministered for their mom and dad, 85 years old and in the ministry. I don't know if you remember, um, Glennis Dorn, a real prophetic woman, author, Bob Dorn, Dr. Bob Dorn, Mama, uh, Papa and Mama Dorn, they, they're known as, how many countries? 60 countries all over the world. Um, they had a phenomenal church in Brighton, Michigan that had such a move of God in the 70s and 80s. I'm an unbelievable move of God. A great work was built. Probably the best move of God in Michigan, honestly, uh, that a church had. And um, I started ministering there when I was 15 years old. And, um, and now mom and dad, mom and dad Miller, or mom, mom and dad Miller, mom and Papa Dorn, they travel all around the world. And uh, this is their son. We're going to hear from him in a few minutes uh, if he has anything to say. I want him to say something. Um, and this is their son, Mark, uh, all the way up here. Just came to Sea City Church to be here with us from Pastor Clint Brown's church in Orlando, Florida. We love you, Mark. Thank you so much. And Tim Dorn, we're so happy that you and Sheena are here. Chris, we're so happy you are here and your beautiful children. Anybody else here for the first time? Let me see your hand. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to City Church. Do you feel at home? Yes. Yes. We love you. We're glad you're here. We're so glad. Thank you for being here. Who? What, did you raise your hand? What? Well, that's right there in the black shirt. That's your first time being here? Well, you were worshiping like you've been here for, for a year. So you know God. Yeah, thank you for being here, y'all. Have you enjoyed it? Yes, I'm so glad. Who else is here for the first time? I'm so glad you're here. I know you. Do I know you? Oh, <laughs> I'm Chef. <laughs> welcome. I'm glad you're here. Are you enjoying it? Yes. Welcome. Do you live in Dallas? Fort Worth. That's, yeah. Close enough. How many come from Fort Worth? Let me see your hands. No excuses. All right. <laughs> Who else is here for the first time? Th this is your first time here. Is okay. I want you to. I, lo I love you. You're just a barrel full of hospital laughs. So, uh, um, just greet us. Tell us hi. Tell us. Tell us what the Lord has done for you. And I love the Lord. He saved my soul when I was ten years old. Amen. He saved your life. <laughs> Saved my life several times. I thank you for everything he's done. I love you, darling. Thank you for being at City Church. Anybody else here for the first time? 
Yes. I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Welcome. What's your name? Raymond? Thank you, Raymond, for being at City Church. Please come back. Darlin, is this your first time? I'm glad you're here. Welcome to City Church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. <coughs> We are three and a half years old, a little more than three and a half years old at City Church. I've never pastored before in my life. Um, Tracy, oh my gosh, I love you, Tracy. Ordained minister here. Um, she drove th for a year at least. You drove three out twice a week, three hours, four hours, twice a week, one way, from way on the other side of Colleen, all the way up here. So four four-hour trips a week for a year because she believes in this ministry. And we licensed and ordained her as a powerful minister. She went down to the border and come here. Give us an encouragement from God. I know you're going through a physical battle and, um, and you just don't know how much you mean to me. You're so special, deep in my heart. I love you so much. Encourage your city church family. Well, if you're going through something that's physical, I want you to know it's because you are getting ready to do something big for God, and Satan doesn't want you to do it. So do what I did. When they told me I had cancer, I wrote Satan on the bottom of my shoe, and I just walk all over him all day long. So the devil is a liar. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. So when it's in the Bible, you know it's true. And there are we have so many people that have gone through something that can be a witness for God, but they're afraid to tell their testimony. Don't be afraid to get out there and tell people what you've gone through because it doesn't mean that you're not walking in faith. Faith is believing that it doesn't matter what the doctor tells you. You're going to believe the report of the Lord. And the report of the Lord says, I am the healed. Not I'm going to be healed. I am the healed. Well, Tracy, what are you going through? I'm not going through anything. I'm the healed of the Lord. I am not going through a thing. I am the healed of the Lord. No, that's Satan trying to rise up and say, I'm going through something. I'm not going through a thing because you know what? I've got people praying for me, and that's what we're here for. We're to pray for each other. Did you just call your pastor Satan? <laughs> or did I misunderstand that? No, you are not Satan. Oh, no. You're not. <laughs> you are not Satan. Well, sometimes. No, no, no. No, he's not. I love, I love, love, love Jeff. And I would come. I even came up from Rio Bravo. I did. I was on the border. And let me tell you what. When you go across that border and you have no protection because all they want to do is take you out. We had the cartel come because we were ministering to prostitutes, their prostitutes. And they came to, to, to take us out. But let me tell you, they didn't do it. We're still here. Those of us that went over are still here. And that's because Psalms 91 says that I have you covered under my wings. The angels will pick you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. So it doesn't matter where God has told you to go. Go because where he sends you, he will protect you. And I love y'all. I love coming back here. you got to move here. you got to move here. Or at least closer. So, three and a half years we've been a church. And I've never pastored before. I've been in ministry since I've been 13. So, like, for about um, 15 years now. <laughs> no, 13. 30 something, 35 years I've been in ministry. And, um, and I thought I knew what it was to pastor. My brother was a pastor. My sister was a pastor. My dad was a pastor. All my best friends were pastors. So I thought I knew what it was to pastor. And you can't know. It's like a man trying to think they know what it is like, what he knows what it's like to be pregnant. You can be around pregnant people and think you know what it's like to be pregnant. And you can like, I don't know, do all the things you can imagine to be pregnant. But you don't know what it's like to be pregnant. And you will never really truly know what it's like to be pregnant. Unless science comes up with some crazy experiment. But, um, but I do know this. Now that I'm a pastor, one of the things that, that is on a pastor is the responsibility of hearing from God to have a preceding word that's coming out of the mouth of God 
currently flowing into that body. And I, I've heard of pastors that have their sermons all lined up for the year and have already you know, worked hard to have them all done, and they do that sermon on that Sunday. That's not the way I work. That's not the way my mind works. I'm a songwriter. I work by flow. Out of my belly will flow rivers of living water. That's how I work. I have a prophetic uh, insight. And so I, I like to get a word from God at that moment for that current place that we are in. And, um, and so I know it's Palm Sunday, and I tried my hardest to have a Palm Sunday sermon. And being three and a half years old, this is my fourth Palm Sunday. And I, 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 I've done three different Palm Sunday sermons. And so I, I, I try to find another angle to preach on Palm Sunday. And I just, to be honest with you, I don't feel it. <laughs> I tried it. I don't want to do it. So I ain't. <laughs> I'm going to minister on what's on my heart, and it's related, but it has nothing to do with palm branches. Is that all right? It's just what is on my heart, and we're just going to read for, I'm only going to be a few minutes because there's more to happen before uh, 5 30, or 7 comes. What time is it? Until 6.30 comes, because we're done at 6.30. So, so let me just uh, read and see what happens. Romans 5, 12. Therefore, just as through one man, someone say Adam, Adam, sin entered the world, and death through sin, before, before I even start, I want you to, what I want you to do is I want you to erase, erase, erase everything in your brain that you've learned in religion. I want you to, because we see Scripture through the glasses of this sin consciousness and the um, religiosity that we have been trained under. And when we see it, we don't really see the greatness and truth of it because we look at it through the lens of, an, of, of a mean-spirited, punishing God. So what I want us to do is I want us to look through the glasses of what God has been speaking in the world to men and women of God all over the world the last several months and even a couple of years and what is rising up in my heart. And that is the finished work of the cross. That it is finished. It is done. There's nothing you can do to make God love you anymore or to make God be more, make yourself more acceptable to God because the best of us, our righteousness, our own righteousness, our self righteousness is like filthy rags. I'm sorry, I had a pseudofed, I'm spitting. But the worst of us can stand clean before a loving and forgiving God because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus. Is there a witness in this place? So what I want us to do is I don't want you to look at these scriptures through the old lenses that we saw it through, but I want you to look at these scriptures as if, as if humanity is redeemed, that the price has been paid. Because guess what? The price has been paid. We just got to let them know. All right? So with that in mind, with the finished work of the cross in mind, and we stand as righteous before God, I want you to read these scriptures through those glasses. Is that okay? Okay. Here we go. Therefore... Just as through one man, Adam. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Whoa. This is powerful. Sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men. I looked up that word men. It means um, male or female, human race. Because all sinned. Someone say, that means me. Because Adam did it, it means all of us have that on us. Okay, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed, which is a legal term, which means it is accounted to you, good or bad. It is accounted to you. The, the, that's 
you, that's on you. Okay? But sin is not imputed when there is a law. So before the law of Moses, technically they weren't supposed to be guilty of it because there was nothing to tell them it was wrong. But still, get ready. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, disobeying God, who is a type of him who was to come. Someone say Jesus. But the free gift is not like the offense. So how we all have this offense on us of sin against God, the free gift of God's grace is not like that. For if by one man's offense, Adam, many died, much more. It's not like that. It's better. It's more. Much more. The grace of God and the gift by the grace of the gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Just stop right there and let's have a little praise break. Let's praise God right there for what Jesus has done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay, let's continue reading. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned, Adam. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. And this gift is not like that. But the free gift, which came from many offenses, resulted in justification. Justify never did it. For if by the one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace. Someone say, that means me. And of the gift of righteousness will reign in life, I will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as the one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's right. He's basically saying the same, same thing over and over, but we're going to read it because we've got to get it. It's so powerful. Resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous act, someone say Jesus, the free gift came to who? All. All. Who does that leave out? All in the Greek means each and every one without exception. And it also means the whole complete together hum humanity all together and individually. Everyone individually and as a group as a whole. There's no way around it. It means all. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all people, resulting in justification of life. Hallelujah. This move of God, this gospel, leaves nobody out. Religion has tried to exclude this group and that group, and these, and those. But you know what I say? The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ is for whosoever will. No matter how bad they've been, we've been, no matter how bad we'll be, it doesn't mean that we're acceptable no matter how good we change and try to be. We are still not acceptable to God except by the one man that justifies us all. Somebody give God praise. So also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Someone say, that means me. Go ahead. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. So the law, the law of Moses, 600 Levitical laws, including the Ten Commandments, which we need to keep. Moreover, the law, but then make us right. Jesus makes us right. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Yeah. 
So that as sin reigned in death, remember grace is greater than sin. It's more powerful. It's better. Even so, grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life, not through my actions, but through Jesus Christ our Lord. <laughs> is that it? That's it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This free gift, it's done. It is finished. It has been accomplished. There's nothing good that you can do that will make you more of a candidate to get into heaven. There's nothing good you can do that you will make you more acceptable to God. Because because of Adam, we all are unacceptable. But because of Jesus, we all are acceptable. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me a E flat. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved Oh, how I love Jesus. Stand up. This is Shaw solo right there. Sing Oh, I Love Jesus. Let me hear you, Shaw. give you an opportunity if you have not been serving the Lord you might be a first time guest you might be here the second time or the twelfth time but you really have not at this point in your life you're not surrendered to the Lord but you want to give your life to God and do the greatest way anyone can worship God is to surrender if you want to do that and receive Jesus into your life and become born again where the Spirit of God lives in your body and you want to experience that today that born again experience surrender to Christ 
Let me see your hand. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, God. Let's give God praise in this place. Everybody stand to your feet. Now let me tell you, repeating a prayer, I don't think that necessarily, oh, that's it, there you go. But it needs to be a, something, what's that thing when you do it over and over, is it a mantra? Is that what it's called? Mantra. What you need to do is just sit, have this be your confession in your life. We're going to begin it right now. The Bible says if you believe in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead and confess him in your life with your mouth, you'll be saved. So everybody, everybody that raised your hand or didn't, I want you to surrender your life to God, all of us, and say this after me. Say, Lord, I give you my life. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. You died for me. You rose again. You're alive. I confess my faith with your mouth, with my mouth. I give you my life right now. Fill my body with your spirit. I am yours. I surrender to you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh. to sow, it's time to give. Miss Maddie, come up here. I'm a spiritual son to you, right? She got you a toothbrush. She got me a toothbrush. You're, I'm a spiritual son to you. You know how I know that? You know how I know I'm a spiritual son to you? You know how I know? I am. Yeah. I know because you send me either a, a, a nice sized um, note from our government that's money on my birthday or a check <laughs> like moms do right and on uh, when you lose a bet oh I pay up you pay up <laughs> and you send it <laughs> yeah so uh, but I love you very 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 much I want you to tell us, I want you to talk to us, I, you know I was going to call on you, but take 30 seconds and tell us how you, how, what it means to be in covenant with God with your finances. Stand up here and cry for about an hour or two. I'll tell you what, don't ever rob God, oh my goodness gracious, because what he has for you is so much more than you could ever give. If you don't know about tithing, come to me. I'll give you a booklet on it. It's the most wonderful thing that could ever happen to you. He, he will give you everything you need. Everything you need. He's been so good to me. You know what? I pray that I become a millionaire someday because my what I want to do is I just want to spend my life giving. There is nothing more fun than seeing a need and filling it. I mean, there is nothing. I mean, if there's a single mother behind me that has six little kids like I did, I want to pay her grocery bill. I want, I want, to, I want to take care of her mortgage. Do you know what I mean? 
I keep looking on Wheel of Fortune. God, please let me win that 5,000. Please. Because I, I don't want it for me. I want to give it away. It is so much fun. It is. Yeah. There's nothing more fun. I Just trust God. Try it. You'll like it. Right, honey? Well, you're, you're so much fun. Yeah. That's right. I love you, darling. I love you, Miss Maddie. I love you. So... I've spent some of my life tithing and some of my life not. And for the last many years, I have been a tither. Where I give God his tenth first. He came up with a percentage I didn't. It's his covenant, not mine. And I tell you, I'm a walking, living testimony of the blessing of God. So if you want to give, you need an envelope to give on your credit card or debit card, or you want a cash envelope, lift up your hand. If you haven't already done it, I need it. If you want to give an offering, let me tell you what City Church is doing in the next couple of weeks. We are serving 600 meals, preparing, paying for, serving. Um, every week we serve meals, but we're in the next couple of weeks, it's going to be about 600 total with everything that we do with Supper Club Ministry uh, from Nando and Christine over that great ministry for three and a half years as the church started we uh, at the HIV residence we serve anywhere from what 50 to 70 meals um, and uh, many have come here from there and now are gone on to apartments and jobs and been saved and filled with the Holy Ghost right here in this room from that ministry it's been really awesome and I praise God for that. And, uh, and But also, um, Austin Street, beginning the fourth Friday of April, we will be doing City Church live at Austin Street, like we used to do on Wednesdays. It'll be on Fridays. And Brittany, raise your hand. And um, Miss Judy, raise your hand. Or over the food, uh, 400 meals. And Miss Dee Dee is over the music and the service. And uh, I will be there. We will be there. And we're so excited. So I can't wait for that. The, the fourth Friday of every month, we will be at Austin Street in the big room there. So I'm excited about that. Yay! Um, last Sunday, we gave away uh, a bunch of tennis shoes. Did anybody get any tennis shoes last Sunday? Yeah? Brand new tennis shoes. This Sunday, we get, gave away some. For those who were not here, you got them. Next Sunday, we're giving away some. This is a great ministry. Brother Mike, you're back there. Isn't this a great ministry? This is a great ministry. So much is happening. We do more to help people than any church of our size that I have ever seen in the history of my life. So uh, I ask you to sow. I ask you to give. We just sent off a $5,500 check for this building. So we need God to move. We need God to speak. If you're writing a check or if you're on the internet and you're writing a check, make it to City Church of Dallas, C-I-T-I-C-H-U-R-C-H, -I -I -C or go online to citychurchofdallas.com and give um, safely and securely on PayPal right there. So we love you so much. God bless you. Hallelujah. Darlin, would you come and sing a song for me? We had lunch today in a, in a, I hope I don't embarrass you, because God knows I do embarrass so many people, I don't mean to, it's a gift. But, um, but she had, she, she had her baby, she's holding her baby, two-year-old baby, and she had a big old cloth on her while right near the restaurant. I, and I, I talked to her for about 10 minutes before I, I saw her blanket move. I said, are you nursing that baby while we're talking? She said, yeah. <laughs> well, praise God. <laughs> She's the... Yeah, my little brother, if my mom's watching, if my mom's watching right now, mother, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> you nurse skipped till he was four years old. That is wrong. It scarred my brain. <laughs> we have opera singers in shock up here all right <laughs> oh, 
You ready to give? I think so. I think so. Hallelujah. Come and bless us, and then I want to talk to you when you're, when, you're, when you're done singing. I love you. Amen. Well, I think we should just celebrate what God has done here today. Amen. So uh, go ahead, and let me be sure that track number 10 is the one. No, not that one. Is that the last one on the disc? Try the one right before that. Try the one right before that. <laughs> I lost my little paper. I had a little paper. Try the one right before that. <laughs> I don't know where I put it. It's not your fault. Try the one right before that. It sounds like Salvador. No, try the one right before that. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, one more. Go up one more. That's the one. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's just celebrate God tonight or today, this evening. <laughs> The Bible says if we would have faith the size of a what? Then we could speak. Si tuvieras fe como grano de mostaza. Is it okay if I sing in Spanish? Eso dice el Señor. Si tuvieras fe como grano de mostaza. Yes. Eso dice el Señor. be seated. Um, before we go, I want to remind everybody to, and I, I want to talk to my brother for a minute here, but I want to remind everybody next Sunday, make sure you are here. And Angie, make sure that we make arrangements to pick up a little earlier if we can at Austin Street, if it's possible, because next Sunday we are having our Easter family dinner, our family Easter dinner here at 3.30. <coughs> Where's Mom Miller? She, where's she at? She's in there? Okay. Mom Miller, come out here. Hey, what's on the menu? Oh, here, Miss Judy's doing it. Miss Judy and Mom Miller. We're thinking, we're 
we're thinking, we're still playing with it, but we're thinking ham, baked chicken, dressing, um, scalloped potatoes, uh, green beans, and maybe some corn, some bread, and some dessert. We're thinking that's kind of it. Well, I think I'm going to be here. <laughs> uh, so Miss Judy and, and Ma Miller are doing it, so praise God. That's great. Well, um, so, so make sure it's a free dinner, so make sure you're here next Sunday at 3.30. If you're a little bit late, you will still feed you. It's okay. We'll still serve you. But, um, and then 5 o'clock, our Easter service. So make sure you bring your family. Okay, you can get your kids or your mom or your dad. Let's have our family Easter dinner together as a family. You don't have to fight all those lines and at the restaurants. Okay, it's going to be really, really good. And then service is at five. We're going to eat right in here around tables. Okay, it's going to be great. Um, Tuesday night, if you're not coming to the uh, Julio, you used to be at Austin Street and you've been in your own apartment now for how long? Seven months. And you still take the bus. How long does it take you to take the bus here? Hour and a half each way. To get here, hour and a half to get back. And he's here a lot on Tuesdays too. Julio, it, it, and I, I love the people that once they um, get through that situation at Austin Street and get their own place again, that they still come. And this is their church home. I love that. This is a, th we love everybody here at City Church. Everybody is welcome. Everybody is equal. Everybody is valued. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter. So, um, um, so if you're missing Tuesday night, don't miss it. It's very anointed, very powerful. It's usually about an hour-ish um, from 7.30 to 8.30-ish. And we usually go out and fellowship afterwards and eat. And then we usually um, have prayer from 7 to 7.30 before service starts right out here in the sanctuary. Uh, Pastor Tim, I want you just to leave us with an encouraging word and just encourage us in the Lord. Thank you for being at City Church. Your mom and dad, mama and papa Dorn will be here um, May 2nd, the first Sunday of May. I'm so excited. But just encourage us and talk to us. Amen. We, we got about two minutes before we got to dismiss them. Hallelujah. Maybe three. I can or five. It, I can do it in a minute and a half. Wasn't that a good word tonight? Amen. Amen. Just right on the back of that. 1 John 3, 1, 2, 3. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Oh. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know Him. Whoa. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what shall be, but we know that when He is revealed... Whoa. We shall be like him, Whoa. for we shall see him as he is. Whoa. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself <laughs> just as he is pure. I'm going to tell you something tonight. We are all the same. Yes, Alcohol and drugs and everything else is no respecter of persons. It's not inclusive to any one race or any one group of people. It's not inclusive to rich or poor. It's not inclusive to anybody. But everybody can be touched by that. I was touched by that in my youth. But by the grace of God, He saved me. Even though I grew up in church, I knew better. But He saved me. And I'm going to tell you something. We are children of God. And you know what? We can't clean ourselves up. We, can, we can't do it, no matter how hard we try. How many people have missed out on something good from God because they felt like their, church, their shirt or their shoes wasn't good enough? But you know what? We can't clean ourselves up, but that's why God sent us the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit comes, and when we accept Jesus, He sends the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will just start cleaning us up, and we don't need nobody to tell us no, no religion is going to clean us up but Jesus. Oh, Amen. Right. Oh. Thank you, Pastor. We have had a wonderful time. This has been great. You promise you'll come back really soon? You will? Okay. 
You're coming with your folks on the 2nd of May. That's great. Wonderful. So good to have you back here. Got to hear you singing soon. You know, I saw you and I just felt to tell you that when you come here, don't think of it as you're here as a guest or as a visitor. When you come here, I want you to feel like you're at home worshiping with your family. Okay? Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad you're here. All of you, thank you for being here. Hallelujah. You know what I feel like? As you were talking, I just felt like, I feel like I have taken a spiritual bath. I feel clean. I feel like I've just bathed my mind. My thoughts have been bathed in God's precious light. And I feel loved by God. Don't you? <laughs> Do you feel strengthened today? Stand up. Let me bless you before we go. Lift up your hands like you're about to re receive something from the Lord. I speak the blessing of the Lord over your life. I decree that you are above only and not beneath. You are the head and not the tail. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you, it will be condemned. I speak strength into your body, your mind, your emotions, your finances, your health. I speak the healing of God. You are healed by the stripes of Jesus and in the name of Jesus. I decree that God is your glory and the lifter of your head. Confidence is being restored into your life. I speak the favor of God and the success of God over your life in Jesus' name. God bless you. I love you. Thank you so much for watching this web broadcast of City Church of Dallas. God is doing so many things. It's blowing my mind. I thought we would be a local church, but we'd become an international church through the internet. So what I want you to do, we have people in Iowa, people in Michigan, people all over this country that are sending in support. And because our church is bigger than this room that we're in, and you can feel the actual presence of God and you are ministered to right over the internet. So if God should lay it on your heart, I want to encourage you to tie. If you don't have a home church, if you have a home church, tie there. If you don't, send your tithe in here to City Church of Dallas. Go to City Church of Dallas. This is how you spell it. Dot com. You can pay on PayPal there, a secure website, or you can send into the address or call in your gift. I promise you, lives are being changed through our prison ministry, nursing home ministry, our AIDS ministry. We feed the hungry, and God is really doing something special. But we're only a little bit more than a year old, so we need people to give. God bless you. I appreciate it with all of my heart.